Greetings, folks. What we have here is another one of those laptops you buy where you're like, why did I get this? Why do I need this? This is a compact Presario model V6000. Yes, I know it's upside down with a one year warranty and Windows Vista Home Premium COA. Oh look, there's a loose screw. That's nice. I suppose I'll have to fix that. There is absolutely nothing special about this laptop. But I happened to see it in a related items box on eBay. I was wondering, why is it so cheap? What the heck? It's only $15. I mean, plus shipping. The shipping kind of killed it, but... $15 for a pretty nice looking and certainly working with power supply laptop is just unheard of today. That being said, this thing is absolutely worthless crap. It's only a Celeron M520 CPU. I'm sure you could upgrade it. I think it is a socketed CPU, but I mean, is it worth it? It's only going to take a Core Duo anyway, so it's not like it's going to be that much better. You can tell it's an older laptop, because you can see it says Compaq on it, as opposed to having the big giant Q in the middle. If you remember my Compaq Presario A900, this will pretty much, this pretty much looks exactly the same, it's just, like I said, it's just a little bit older. So you can see here on the side, it does have an SD card reader, Firewire. To USB. There's a blank there. I'm not sure if that would have been infrared or if that would have been something else. Modem Ethernet. It's new enough to have the newer expansion port, the proprietary expansion port, which I would have believed went to a docking station or a port replicator or something similar. VGA, S video. There's a cooling vent on the back right there. Kensington lock. Power, another USB port, light scribe capable dual layer DVD burner, pretty nice. And this, I believe, is an express card slot. Yes, that is express card. On the front, mostly just lights, but you have your headphone and microphone as well. There's the light for the Wi Fi. Or actually, that's probably not for Wi-Fi. That's actually probably for a cellular connection that this might have been an option or might have been included with this with an option and the, the Wi-Fi lights over here. You can see it's pretty clean. I mean, it's got my fingerprints all over it, but it's extremely clean and it's scratched up a little bit, certainly. I mean, you can see there's some damage there and there's some in the corner here, but for the most part, it's not doing too badly. There's a lot more over there, but... Usually when you find these things, they're all scratched to hell. So let me go ahead, we can open it here. Take a look. This is a 15-inch laptop, so it does not have the number pad or anything like that. But other than that, if you look at this thing, you'll definitely get vibes of the Presario A900. It's basically exactly the same laptop. It's just a little bit older. In fact, it might not actually be older. I'm trying to think about what CPU is in the A900. Excuse me, is in the A900 that I've got. It's got a widescreen display. There's no webcam, but it does have dual microphones. And it's not because it's got a stereo microphone, and so far as I know, it's because one of those is used for noise cancelling. Which doesn't really tend to work. There, of course, is a Presario V6000 logo right there. It has an Alltech Lansing speaker system. I did not see a woofer on the bottom for bass, but then again, this is a, certainly a smaller laptop. There's definitely some wear on the keyboard. So this was not lightly used, but it wasn't heavily used either because you can see that the palm rest is still intact and that trackpad looks like it's never been used. So somebody probably used this with a mouse. It's also got the little lockout button in the middle, you could turn that off. Now, this laptop is completely dead battery-wise. Does not take a charge at all. 
I don't think it's really worth investing in a battery in this, so I probably will not do that. But, let me go get the power supply and we can fire this thing up and take a look at it. Okay, it's now plugged in. You can see it starts to try and charge the battery. But after a while, that battery light will start flashing at me. Because it does not take a charge at all. F10 key to get into setup. Compact. And there we go. You can see the time is wrong. It's not actually 11 o'clock anymore. It's 40 minutes past midnight, so that's neat. Um, but yes. There's the model ID there. Celeron M520, 1.6 gigahertz, 2 gigs of RAM. The problem with these compact laptops these days is not so much what they are. It's that HP who manufactured this because this was made long after the compact takeover. I know HP had their own versions of these, the DV series. Uh, so this would have been a DV6000 if it were an HP. It probably had some better features. Maybe a bigger CPU, etc, etc. I know I've got a DV8000 up there as well as a DV9000. I think I've got a DV5000 sitting around here somewhere as well. Probably down there somewhere, but anyway. But they've been doing their level best to get rid of the drivers for these machines, so you can't really find them on legitimate websites. You just gotta go to those shady driver collection sites and find them and hope that they're not littered with malware driver installers and things like that. You get more options with this. I wonder if this... No, I have to reboot the machine in order to change that, but I'm pretty sure that that corresponds to that beeping noise. 128 megabytes video memory. I'm going to go ahead and I'll turn on the network adapter boot. That should be the Ethernet. Kind of intrigued me always that there was no PXE option for wireless. Kind of makes you wonder why. I don't know. I guess none of the uh, wireless cards have a boot ROM on them. You can do a hard disk self-test, which I'm not going to do because it'll take forever. So we'll just exit and we'll save changes. The YouTube viewing audience will like this because this machine came to me running Windows 7. It has Windows 7 installed. Every time I mention the phrase Windows Vista, I always get questions about why I would even bother putting something like that on this. And I probably won't. I'll probably just continue to use Windows 7. Maybe even this install of Windows 7, because there's nothing overtly wrong with it. It looks like a pretty fresh installation. The problem, you probably noticed right away, you might even be able to hear it, if you listen carefully. So I think that hard drive is struggling. Now it was sold to me as working, and the problem with eBay is that the phrase working means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. You'll have some of the professionals that will be like, okay, I've tested this, there's no bad sectors, it boots up into Windows, everything seems to be fine, all of the functionality is good. Then you've got the other folks who will be like, okay, the, I turn it on, the lights come on, yeah, it works. So, you know, I've certainly bought plenty of things on eBay over the past while where it was billed as working, but it needed some help in order to actually get working. Yeah, you could probably hear that hard drive. does not sound very healthy to me. It does eventually boot up. Or at least it did. So I guess we'll find out if it still does. But yeah, if it were perfectly healthy, it would not be sitting there that long. 
it would be at a desktop already and I'd be doing the rest of this video. That hard drive has a fairly large, um, sorry, loud head stack. Kind of surprised, really. The speakers are kind of, they're not tinny, but they don't have a lot of full range to them. It seems to me that they're mostly mid-range. So... Yeah, I'm sure if I connect this thing to a network, I'll be able to get the, uh, the date and time situation straightened out. I'm going to make the assumption that this is a legitimate copy of Windows 7, and that it's also a fresh installation. Because like I said, it looks like there's basically nothing that's been done to this. Yeah, there it is making that noise again. Just bringing up the control panel. Go to the front here, we can see wireless switch. Turn that off. Light goes orange. Turn it back on. Then this here. Light's a little dim, but it does work. You do that, and it locks out the trackpad. So Anyway, system rating is not available. I tried to rate it, and it just failed. So, I mean, we can try it again, but... Might be related to the hard drive issue. Might be related to something else. It claims that it's running genuine Windows. So, again, I'm not going to cast any aspersions on an eBay seller for putting pirated Windows on this, but... Sometimes you never know. It's hard to tell. I didn't think to look whether this was 32 or 64 bit. Guess it could also do that. Well, it didn't stop where I thought it would. At least not where it did last time, but it did fault out. Because, like I said, that hard drive is toast. So, I guess as far as, uh, Benchmark, we may never know. It is a 64-bit operating system. Kind of interesting. Also Windows 7 Professional. With Service Pack 1 installed. I wouldn't bet that it's fully up to date, because you can see it's still got the old Internet Explorer icon. I think it had a 320 gigabyte hard drive in it. Yes. Take a look in here at the device manager and see what we've got. These laptops were very well known for being lemons uh, because I believe they actually have NVIDIA graphics. And these were one of those systems where the NVIDIA graphics just kind of tended not to work. But I could be quite surprised. Yep. No, this one's got the Intel 945, which probably explains why it still works. <laughs> was I right or was I right? That is a 320 gigabyte Toshiba hard drive. Wow. So, probably not the original. It's only 10100 Ethernet. And 211G Wi Fi. So, I guess it's not ultimately terrible <laughs> but at the end of the day it's gonna definitely need some work alright yep smart error we're not at alert level yet but yeah not great Bob not great at all oof Yikes. <laughs> yeah, this thing is done. This thing is just completely toast. 
So, I have a bunch of 240 gigabyte SSDs. So even though it's probably a waste to put an SSD in a system like this, I'll go ahead and I'll put one in here. And when I do, there'll be a video, I guess, in the process as well. You can actually see there the battery not charging. There's an error. In the process, I'll probably install it, or I'm going to leave Windows 7 on here, I think. I'll just clone the existing disk if I can. Excuse me. Because I might not actually be able to. But uh, we'll try and clone the existing disk. And um, from there, I'll probably actually set this up as a dual boot environment, thinking about that. But, again, it's possible if I can't clone the disk, this thing is just going to get Windows Vista. Even though I know that my viewing audience hates Windows Vista for some reason. Can't possibly imagine why. <laughs> Trust me, I don't like Windows Vista either, but that's what the COA is for. And I don't know how dedicated I am to installing a tool to extract the product key from the Windows 7 on this, and I'm not wasting an activation of my Windows 7 license on this stupid thing, so... Whatever. Something will get done. And when it does, there'll be a video, but for the meantime, thank you for watching this video of this compact Presario V6000. If you got any comments, feel free to leave them down below.